Welcome back to Neil Oliver Live. My first guest tonight, Mr Brian Rose, is here to talk to us about his channel, London Real. But before we get into that, let's take a look at a clip from Brian's new film, We Will Not Be Silenced. Permits dictate what is allowed to be said. But today we will not be silenced. And one million people will be watching. I prepared my whole life for a moment like this. But nothing would prepare for what happened next. This is London Real. I am Brian Rose. My guest today is David Icke. What happened after that broadcast, Brian? That's very intriguing, to put it mildly. Brian, thank you for joining me. What, what did happen next, as you teased in that clip? Yeah, well, just to put in a little context, 12 years ago, I quit my job as a, a city banker and decided to start broadcasting, or I became a YouTuber, basically. Mm -hmm. And so that was three years ago. So I was nine years in. It was April 6, 2020. I had the second largest YouTube live stream in the world that day, 65,000 concurrent viewers. Uh, the winner that day was uh, President Trump's coronavirus briefing. And this episode would have been gone on to watch, be watched probably 30, 40 million times, probably the most watched video podcast in history. And 30 minutes later, YouTube deleted and banned that video. Now I've been doing this for nine years. I never had one single video banned from YouTube. And I started on this massive fight for freedom of speech or what I call digital freedom of speech. And I was subsequently banned and shadow banned by pretty much every other technology platform. That day was us fighting back by creating our own platform and live streaming to a million people. What did they take exception to? I mean, were they, was YouTube, were YouTube explicit with you about in what way you had transgressed? Well, we were part of their partner program, so I had spent time at YouTube Studios. And when I got someone on the phone, they said that anything that violates or disagrees with the WHO policy, which was actually constantly changing at the time, uh, was going to be taken down. And don't even get started using the V word, because if you say vaccine, pretty much forget about it. Now, at the time, they first said that you shouldn't wear masks, and they said you shouldn't wear masks. I remember the governor of New York said something in opposition. I said, so are you going to ban him? It was much in flux. And this is the problem with these policies. They're so subjective that they can use any reason under the sun to basically ban your content. Did you see your cancellation coming? It was in the wind. You know, I had had Icon about three weeks earlier, and that episode had gone pretty much global and viral. I didn't know that the BBC was watching that day, and they were really trying to put pressure on YouTube. And so after that broadcast, it turned out that there were quite a few forces that were trying to silence us. Um, I didn't see it coming. You know, you always think it's the weirdos that get censored until it happens to you. And so then I really got this whole education. And right now I'm being censored today. W well. was, there any, was there any point when you were talking to David Icke when he said something and you thought, now we're in, now we've got a party. Now, you know, we're, now, we've, got a, now we've got something. It was so early on. And first of all, we were all living with fear. There was so much uncertainty. My first broadcast was March 18th. They locked us down in London about March 20th. That broadcast was April 6th that they banned. So we still just didn't know what was going on. And again, I just want to make it clear. I don't believe or agree with everything that David Icke has to say. He has some crazy ideas. But I believe he has the right to say it so we can have an open and honest discussion. I, I never dreamed YouTube would take down one of my videos. It was created to give people voices all around the world and that's what they did for me but I felt really betrayed by this happening and two months ago today I had been completely deplatformed from YouTube so uh, you know life imitates art now imitating life again uh, and that's yeah. been very challenging. L Laura Dodsworth how do you respond how do you react listening to, to it's not a unique story we've, we've been aware of people being cancelled deplatformed and all the rest of it by YouTube and other platforms mm -hmm. but how do you how do you respond to I think um, you make a really good point about the WHO because the WHO um, proved itself to be eminently fallible during the um, COVID-19 pandemic. And so social media platforms kind of chasing their tails to be observant about WHO current policy was obviously going to be fraught with problems because, you know, things are going back and forth. Certainly it wasn't just the weirdos. I think Talk TV was deplatformed briefly. Brief. But, of course, as part of the uh, Rupert Murdoch empire, there was pressure that could be applied to bring him back. I mean, I think Dr Carl Hennehan, the director of um, the Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine and a, mm -hmm. a doctor... Um, and, you know, at Oxford uh, was also not deplatformed, but kind of 
visibility filtered on Facebook when he critiqued a randomised controlled trial about face masks. So it happened to all kinds of people, you know, professionals, media organisations. I think the danger is that, um, you know, one thing about this is that, you know, un under Article 10 of the um, uh, Human Rights, we should have freedom of expression. So I think that if you are observant of this, the law in this country, if you're not inciting violence and hatred, I think you should be allowed to say things which are stupid and wrong. And that's not to say whatever happened in your video was stupid and wrong. But then people should be able to dispute it and put up counter material. What do you do now, Brian? In this film, We Will Not Be Silenced, what is your strategy? As, as you, you know, look ahead. Yeah, well, first of all, all crazy ideas that end up becoming amazing innovations in this world stop, start out as sounding like stupid and crazy, from democracy to the steam engine to the internet to artificial intelligence. And so if we don't allow that discussion to happen in an open and honest way, we're literally depriving humanity. I mean, you could argue humanity only is where it is today because we've had this open and honest debate. I would argue that millions of lives were lost because we couldn't have a debate about lockdowns, about masks, about vaccine, vaccine safety. And, and this is a real issue. And back to Article 10 or the First Amendment in the US or Article 11 of the European Human Rights, you know, that freedom of expression, but more importantly, your right to hear me, to listen to me, uh, was being violated. Now, thanks to Elon Musk, we found out later that our government was going behind our backs and telling these companies to actually break the law and censor us. So it's, it's become a huge mess. And the fact that now, as of two months ago, I've been deplatformed again, you know, it puts me in a tricky situation, but I focus on what I can control. Luckily, these days, there's lots of other social media platforms, including Twitter slash X, including Rumble and a variety of others that continue to put out content and won't be influenced by the government. Now, recently, we saw the government write a letter to Rumble trying to get them to silence someone like Russell Brand. And I don't know what he did, and I don't agree with everything that he did, but to do that without any type of, you know, judge, jury, or anything else, is it's just ridiculous. And That wasn't the government, though. I just got to say, that was an MP writing, but it wasn't on behalf of the British government. But it was, nonetheless, uh, conviction based mm -hmm. on allegation. Yeah, yeah, ab a absolutely. a dangerous idea. I just want to say it wasn't the British yes. government, yeah. but... So it's just a dangerous time, and right now we're just losing more and more of our human rights and more and more of our freedoms, and now people are self-censoring. So the movie goes in and shows how YouTubers like me, they self-censor. First, what they do is they is they demonetize you, all right? Most YouTubers rely on that for a living, so they will stop saying the bad things. Then they shadow ban you, taking your views down. Again, we'll get you back in line. And of course, then they give you strikes and they deplatform you. I never relied on YouTube for income, so I, I was free to say what I wanted to say. I believe in an open honest debate. I don't agree with most of what my guests say, but I think we should have that mm. conversation. And so this is important. We have to talk about it. We have to fight back. Again, YouTube is this tiny little area in Silicon Valley that's exporting their views to the world. It's, um, it's a real danger right now. Another break is upon us. Uh, welcome back. Uh, my next guest joining the conversation about censorship uh, has been very vocal uh, about uh, Brian Rose in particular. Uh, even to the extent of making a film about the time when uh, Brian stood as a candidate for London Mayor. Uh, but does he think what happened to Brian was right? Michael Crick joins me now. Great to have you on the show. You've had Brian in your sights. Why, why was that? And, and what do you, how do you respond to what has happened to, to Brian's channel in, in recent times? Well, I mean, overall, I'm very worried about censorship on... Uh, the whole issue is so complicated. And, you know, values and standards vary in different parts of the world. And we live in a world of, of you know, a very limited number of very powerful platforms. Uh, decisions probably met, being made by AI, by computer, not by, made by human beings. And all sorts of absurdities arrive. I mean, there's a great editorial in The Spectator today in which The Spectator complains about being, you know, they wanted to advertise on, on uh, Facebook and Facebook banned their ad because it had a cartoon on the front of Joe Biden. And, you know, it was a bit of satire. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of absurdities and there are a lot of very very difficult issues now uh, the, the reason I was critical of, of uh, uh, and I'm still critical of what happened with Brian is that he himself has censored I mean when he was running for mayor uh, way back in 2021 uh, you know a group of school kids interviewed him online about his campaign and they were they were starting to ask critical questions which is pretty good for 15 year olds and um, uh, and they they're interview with Brian was 
brought down, went up on YouTube for about a minute, and then it was blocked on copyright grounds. And then there was an argument went on for a few days, and eventually they managed to get it back up there. Um, but, you know, London Real were using, they were arguing that the interview was Brian's copyright, or their copyright, and therefore they had the right to pull it down. Whereas anybody knows a political interview, that the copyright on that belongs to the people doing the interview. And, the, and Brian was embarrassed by the questioning, and I, he's I embarrassed you, by people asking about his business practices. I have to let Brian respond yeah. to that right away. Yeah, I don't remember us doing that whatsoever. Uh, you don't remember the argument? No, I remember the interview, uh, but I don't remember any type of censorship allegation. Look, this was a big story at the time. It was covered in all sorts of places. Uh, I don't believe it when you say you don't remember it. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about was our digital platforms allowing us the right to free speech. And when we give that, those rights up to people like YouTube, to potential in an online safety bill, that's Yeah, well, let's really talk about this, 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 this case here, right? Okay. You, you, you used, you claimed that the interview, these young school, school kids, right? School kids. I did all uh, the uh, you, interviews you, during the mayoral campaign, so I'd uh, have to go back and check. Well, uh, you look, this is bogus. I mean, this, there was a big fuss about this at the time. Okay. And, you know, uh, when we get we, to our age, we, our memories aren't mean, great. But in this case, I mean, okay, well, let me say, do you think it's wrong then that you, that interview you know should have been taken me. off? You know who censored me was the BBC not inviting me on their show. Can you answer my to question? Debate against six you're, you're avoiding the question here, That's where the censorship You're avoiding the question here, right? Do you think it's right that. Uh, London Real, working, which is yeah. your company, we don't have the power exercise to copyright. People. We don't have the power to censor this, uh, Well, you, both, you, yeah, but the, both, you, you, you both, claimed the interview was your both, copyright, both of, and it we're then not came, get, came we're down. We're not going to get to the yeah. bottom of this because yeah. there's clearly a, a, a disagreement. And what I'm saying is that this is not really the first man to talk about what? censorship, because he has exercised it's censorship not, himself. I, I would say that, you know, yeah. the error there seems to be YouTube, because if they received a copyright violation report and there was no copyright violated, they shouldn't have... Well, who did they get the copyright report? I don't want to from. I don't would you want like to, to apologise then to, I don't to Felix van der Geest? Would you like to take this uh, opportunity well, minute, Michael, to apologise to him Brian, for doing that? Brian disputes, schoolboy. Brian disputes that version of events and we're not going to get to the Well, he hasn't explained it. what the version of events is because he doesn't remember it. It's, we're not going to get to the bottom of it. This is a, a basic disagreement yeah. over a specific incident. But can I... To, to well, I mean, he might like to take the opportunity and express sympathy with Felix, Felix van der Geest. A school, he's still a schoolboy. He was only, you know, he hadn't even, wasn't even in his GCSE it's, year at the time. To say that yeah. You're disputing that, sequ that, that account of that sequence of events. And as I say, we're just not going to... Well, yeah, but, I mean, he could express sympathy, couldn't he? Because he had something taken down off YouTube as well. His interview with Brian Rose, which mysteriously was taken down. And, well, it's not mysterious. It was taken down on copyright grounds. Would because you, London Real were exercising, were claiming the copyright belonged to Brian. this is the problem with YouTube. They can choose. Well, express to take sympathy then down. with Felix van der Geest. I clearly cannot tell them what to censor. No, but, but why don't you express sympathy with Felix van der Geest? There's something Vandegeist. wrong with that. Do you, you know, know, if I was in this situation and this had happened to be me, yeah. happened to me, I'd be hugely embarrassed and I'd be saying, Felix, give me his number. I'll ring him up. I will say sorry to Felix van der Geest. Mr. Rose is not doing that. Why? We're just going to get stuck here. Let's mo let's just move this. Well, we are because he's refusing limit. to apologise to Mr. Van der Geest. But well, Felix van der Geest, a schoolboy. But it's, you know, it's and, only your assertion. As a, to apologise for. Sorry, and, and Mr. Van Dyck, should we ring him up? Let's, let's ring him Michael, up and put him on I, live. Let's, let's not. Let's no, not let's do that. Do that because we can't, let's do that. Ring him up right now and he Michael, will give you his version of really, events. Really, we can't do that, Michael. We well, cannot you know, do that. It, 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 can, I, can I just address yeah, I'm something? Saying, what I'm saying is that censorship takes many forms. And when Brian Rose well, was I, running I, for Mayor of London, can, he didn't like it when people started asking difficult questions. Can I just, and a politician who's worth his salt should be open to the toughest scrutiny and shouldn't be frightened of a bunch of schoolboys. There's plenty of you tough must, questions, you, including by you, on my You must not talk about the time that we have on this yeah. single yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you talk about being yeah. broadly uh, wary of censorship. Yeah. OK? Now, on this channel, yeah. on GB News, yeah. with, in the company of Michelle Dubin, yeah. you said that you thought GB News ought to be shut down. Now, well, yeah. that would appear... Well, because you're biased. Be you're right-wing. I mean, you do things like you have... You, you're basically, I mean, I've been fighting bias in television for a very long time, and it's one of the reasons I left Channel 4 News, because I thought it was left-wing biased. And I think Ofcom, who are one of the weakest institutions on the planet, should get a grip on you lot. I mean, it's absurd that you have 
Tory MP after Tory MP after Tory MP, uh, two leaders of the Brexit party, and uh, hardly any Labour MPs. You no are a right-wing channel, and the rules in this country are very there clear. There is no doubting. There yeah. is no doubting. I don't think you can. I don't think you can deny that the channel has made space for all kinds of voices, left, right, well, and they're, they're, in, no, in they're between. predominantly on the right. I mean, look at you know when Nigel Farage takes the week off. Who replaces him? Okay, I'm being, who replaces I'm being told, him? I'm being the told, leader, the, to, the leader of the Brexit the, of Reform UK. Of the 67 me, million people in this country, you choose to replace we'll Nigel Farage. Go, it's his successor, his Brexit going, Party leader. We're going into. You've got a, Boris Johnson. We're going into a break.